Hey guys, it's Jen over at worldofgencraft.com and this is our project for today. So this is a little three by four inch envelope treat pouch. I was perusing uh, Pinterest um, a few days ago and I ran across quite a few little projects using, uh, I guess they're called bagalopes. Um, and the one that I ran across was actually created by Angie Judah quite a few years ago. Um, and as soon as I saw her little treat pouch, I knew that I needed to stop what I was doing and pull out my supplies and start playing. Um, and I also knew that this was the little stamp set that I wanted to use for these pouches. So, um, this is the little bear and then here is the sweet little lion and I used the Oh My Stars embossing folder for this one and for my little elephant I used the hexagons embossing folder and each one of them has just a sweet little sentiment on the inside. My lion I actually put a little tiny flower um, and <laughs> My sentiment was stamped a little uh, crooked on that one, but I just kept it like that because I didn't feel like coloring out a whole new one. Um, so this is the one that we're going to be making today. So I'm going to go over our long, very long list of supplies, hopefully quickly, and we're going to get started on putting this project together. The first thing um, is Tuxedo Black ink that I use, the base, uh, tux, yeah, the tuxedo, memento, that's what it's called. I'm all tongue-tied. Um, and I did that with my, to stamp my images. My pear pizzazz and soft sky that we're going to use to sponge the background. And I used these two um, things for my sponging, but you can take one of our round sponges as well, cut it into quarters, and you'll have really nice sponges to use for the background, which I have used also. Um, the Whisper White Medium Envelopes Stampin' Ups. These, I believe, are the A2 size. You'll just need one of those or 10, however many you plan on making. Um, the A Little Wild Stamp and Die Set comes as a bundle. Um, and I just absolutely love this set. You can use this set as intended as little tags. So that's how I kept these. Now, if I didn't want this little thing to flip up in front, I certainly could have cut him out and just stuck him on the uh, on the front just as is. But I really like the idea of having a little interactive tag on the front of this bag to put a little hello inside of it. So that is that. The layering circles framelits and the stitched shapes framelits. And find a spot to put that. The Woodland Embossing Folder, I think that's what this is called. Um, I purchased this quite a while ago and this is the first time I've brought it out and used it, but I thought it was absolutely perfect with my little bear to be in the woods. Stampin' Blends, my favorite coloring medium. Um, I will list out the colors on our video um, so you know which ones I used. And then I did cover each of my little guys with um, a clear brush of Clear Wink of Stella. I used our Ticket Tear Border Punch. Again, something I purchased. It's been sitting on my shelf collecting dust, but I pulled it out to use on these envelopes. I really like the, um, the just that little extra added touch at the top of it. And I think finally, last but not least, is the Old Olive Stitched Edge Ribbon. Phew! Um, I will recommend a nice um, heavy duty tape. So when we tape up the back, as I'll show you, I did like to use my red line tape for it. I found that my Tombow mono adhesive just didn't have the hold that I wanted to on that one. Um, so for our supplies, for our, to actually make the bag itself, you're going to need one envelope, a two and a half inch scalloped old olive circle, a two and three eighths inch whisper white stitched circle, and then you'll need scrap to stamp out both the little bear and the little honeybees that we'll be putting on there. Now I did go ahead and pre-stamp this ahead of time um, because I have found if I let it sit for a little while before I start coloring, I have less risk of it bleeding when I do go to color in using the alcohol markers. So let me get started. I'm gonna pull out my paper trimmer I'm going to show you how to make this darling little treat bag or treat pouch or whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to start off and I'm just going to take off one quarter of an inch off each edge of our envelope. 
And you are also going to want to make sure that you have sealed your envelope too. So I'm just going to run my um, Tombow across here. This is the part that I was fine with sealing it with. So we're just going to go ahead and seal the envelope. And then we're going to bring back out our trimmer. And if you have a scoring tool, a Simply Scored scoring tool, that works just as good. So I'm going to line this up along with the half inch mark on this. And I'm going to just take and score. And then I'm going to score again on the other side at the half of an inch as well. On one bottom, you're going to score at one inch. So that is what we're going to use to create our bag. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my Ticket Tear punch and I'm just going to line this up in here and I'm going to punch off this top edge that we did not score. So I'm just going to line it up along here. And then sometimes it's hard to tell if I've got it all going. Okay, and then I think just this very edge that didn't get punched, I'm just going to cut off here with my scissors. So we have that. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to fold in all of your score lines and you're going to want to crease them nicely with your bone folder. So I'm going to bring this up. I was having a hard time seeing where my score line was. So um, I went ahead and you're going to just, I like to have it kind of creased both ways just to know I have got a nice little crease line in here. And then our sides are going to get creased as well. Might have had to go a little bit deeper with my scoring, but this should work. So we're just going to make sure these are nice and uh, pliable once we go to create our little sack. So I'm going to do the same here on this score line, just fold it and crease it. So I think that looks. That looks good. So then what we're going to do is you're going to open up your little bag and you're going to bring this so this side and this side are going to match up just like that. And then you're going to do that again on this side. So you're just going to crease down and then up again. And then I'm going to make sure that these are nicely creased together as well. taking my bone folder and making that nice crease. And then what I'm going to do is I'm on the back side, you know, where your little envelope flap is, I'm going to add some adhesive on the inside of this, um, just using my red line tape. And I didn't use a ton, but just enough to uh, close up the edges. So I'm just going to Stick this inside here, and I'm going to bring my tape across so then it holds all of that down. And then I'm going to do the same with the side here. And I, you could probably skip this step, but I do like having it all down. Oops, I think I might have overlapped that. Let's see. I did. Let's see if I can pull this off now. <laughs> I think it's a, not a wardrobe malfunction, but a prop malfunction, I think, here. Okay, let me just do this. That way it's easier to pull off of the... Okay, I'm going to fast forward or skip over this for you guys because I'm having a heck of a time getting this off. Okay, so now that that's off, whew, I'm just going to go ahead and seal this here. And then I'm going to take another piece of my red line 
or red line or red I don't know what this stuff's called but it's red tape and it's really super thick and nice so I just want to go ahead and put some of this just along this edge as well oh perfect hopefully this will come off a little bit easier than the last one all right and then this is going to come up here so then we'll have that all glued down and ready to go now you can leave this sack uh, bag just the way it is you don't have to emboss it but I really liked the added texture that the embossing gave so I'm just going to grab out my big shot and our embossing folder and making sure that I have the uh, raised part on my front um, I'm just gonna oops I think I'm way off so I just want my raised front you know so where it's raised on the front and not on the um, yeah so well I'm just gonna do that <laughs> oh man all right all right so isn't that pretty so it did give me a little bit of grief when I ran it through um, with this all folded up just because this is a little bit thicker in this area so you could run it through before you do that before you fold it up um, but I did manage to get it through so um, and then it will kind of stick together in places so I just kind of want to very carefully separate that so there's that okay so let's get started this is going to be a little bit longer video I apologize in advance but I don't know how to shorten it up without you know skipping some of these steps um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab out my soft sky and my pear pizzazz and I'm going to create my background um, I'm just going to start off with my soft sky I'm going to ink up my little sponge here and starting off um, from your circle you're just going to move around in a circular motion and you can make this uh, part of your background as light or as dark as you want um, but you know just stop whenever you feel like you have enough color um, for you for your liking and I am doing a good majority of it. So I'm only leaving this smaller portion down here for my uh, pear pizzazz, for my ground, if you will. So then let's go ahead and take our pear pizzazz and we'll get that inked up here. And I'm thinking that's pear pizzazz, but it's not looking like pear pizzazz. Oh, it is pear pizzazz. Okay, it was just kind of coming off a little, a little bright green. Maybe I used old olive on the last one. I don't know. I thought I used these two colors together. I really like them together. So I'm going to come back over it again. And I just want to go back over it where those two colors meet, just so they have a nice blend in the, uh, in the where they meet, I guess. Having, I'm having a hard time finding the words today. I don't know what my deal is. <laughs> um, so then we're going to bring in our little grass. And of course, I did forget to put that on a stamp. So I'm going to grab that quick and just switch this out here. And, and using my pear pizzazz, I'm just going to place this grass. I'm going to grab this back again. And then I'm going to put one kind of down here towards the bottom. And then another one coming off of here and I'm getting a little edge on that and then there I guess maybe it looks like an extra little thing of grass on there <laughs> I don't I don't know um, all right so then that's just going to get adhered onto our scalloped circle I really think that background is really pretty and then we're going to use Stampin' Dimensionals and we're going to pop this up. Just like here. So now let's move on to our little sweet honey bear and the little bees. Now to color him in, I used my light and dark crumb cake, some pink pirouette, 
and I think that was it for him. Yep, so let's go ahead and color him in. And what I did is I went ahead and that's not, is that crumb cake? Yep, that's light crumb cake. So I colored in his whole entire body crumb cake, the light one, and then I came back over with the dark and kind of got into some of the lines um, and did, you know, just a little bit of shading, but not anything super fancy, so. So there's our little tiny bear and I'm not going to color the back of him because he's just going to get cut out and adhered onto our uh, image piece here. Now I did want to go ahead and show you how I colored in my little bees and not necessarily the body because all I did with the body is just use my dark daffodil delight um, just to color in each of their little bodies and I used five of them total so I just stamped out the two. You get little three little bees each time you stamp one out. So I brought in my light smoky slate marker and I colored in each of their little wings. But I didn't really want to leave the that much of it, you know. I wanted it to kind of look like it had they were, you know, bees wings, but not gray. So then what I did is I came back over it with our color lifter and just brought it in here. And what this does is that lifts off some of that gray and then just kind of gives that shadowed effect in there. Um, and so I thought that ended up turning out perfect for the little bees wings, so. That way you have just a little hint of gray. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So you have a little hint of gray, but it's not fully colored in that gray. Um, so let's bring our big shot back out again and we will cut out our images. And I am using our magnetic platform for this. I might have to use, flip my plate, and then I'm going to bring this in. I don't know if I can get those bees at the same time, but I'm going to try. <clears throat> Excuse me, I get a little frog in my throat all of a sudden. <clears throat> well, isn't that fun? I think I'm going to wait on that. We're going to cut out our bear first. And then we're going to bring in our little bees, which is right here. And then this is just going to get cut out. So for this one, I thought I would show you how I cut out uh, my images um, almost every time. You know, especially these little ones sometimes when you put the plate directly on top of it they have a tendency to move a little bit so the trick that i have found um, that helps almost every time i can't say it's it's every single time but i will start with my plate kind of up at an angle and instead of laying it flat completely down um, i will go ahead and i'll start to crank my big shot and then allow that plate just to kind of naturally come down onto my, uh, over my die. And like I said, it, it works most of the time where then your die won't move um, because it's not started in the down position while you're cranking it. So give that a try. I hope I explained that good enough. It's kind of hard to show on video, so. All right, we are just about done. So bring my little guy back in here and I'll bring my little scene back in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and crease my uh, where the little tag is. And I am gonna cut off the actual tag that goes on here. That's meant to like um, 
have little ribbon or something going through but I don't want that so I'm just trim that off and then I'm gonna fold him up so he matches up run my little bone folder across it so I have a nice crease and then I'm going to adhere him on hopefully you can see what I'm doing yep and I'm gonna bring him kind of over here um, off center just a little bit so we can place our little bees on there um, and I think I'm going to bring my sentiment in here and I just stamped it on with the uh, pear pizzazz Let's see if I can get it centered in here so I just kind of put it down right about here and then I'm going to put a couple little honeybees on in the inside and I'm just going to put them on my little glue dots here. Let me find the end of it. So put them on, and I only need five. All right, now that I've got these little guys on, I'm just going to go ahead and stick them here. So I'm going to stick one here, and then I think I'm going to stick another one down here at the bottom. And then let's go ahead, and I'll put the three up here at the top. So... Let's see, we'll get this little guy maybe right about here. And then we'll have one going, let's see, this little guy is going to go up here, kind of off a little bit. And then lastly, we'll throw this little one kind of down here. So there's that. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap, well, second to last thing is I'm going to go ahead and wrap my ribbon around the back side. And I'm just going to line that up um, with the top edge of the back portion where it folds up. And then we're just going to tie a little knot. Maybe. <laughs> I think I have a little too much on here, but all right, so there's that, and usually I like to use, oh, here they are, I'm just going to cut this off about here, and then do the same on this side, there, I might trim that down just a little bit more, all right. I'm just going to kind of make sure that that's even here. There. And finally, I'm going to try and crease that down a little bit. And then we're just going to brush on some Wink of Stella. I'll start with my little bees on the inside. And then I'm going to brush my whole entire bear as well. All right. There it is. That is our finished project. Look at that shimmer. Isn't that just too pretty? Um, so that's it. This is our project. I'll bring in my other two with the sweet little elephant and the sweet little lion. I know this video was a little lengthy. I apologize for it. But again, um, I just had to get all the steps in and show you how to do each of them. So thank you for sticking with me and watching through the whole video or fast forwarding through most of it. <laughs> um, but I appreciate it. If you would like, I'll have the and, uh, dimensions, details, and a printable, downloadable PDF format that also has a supply list attached to it. All over on my website, worldofgencraft.com. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you later. Bye.